Hello, fine pathfinders. Today, I felt moved to share some revelations that I had last night in how I relay some of the concepts that we're studying and working with in the Tao Te Ching, as inspired by teaching the Tao Te Ching. That's right. Your guide is staying studied. You didn't think something like this existed, but sure enough, it's that popular. So this is a compilation of essays, a bunch of different scholars, you know, big scholars, and how they prefer to approach teaching the Tao Te Ching. Some really, really good stuff. A lot of contradictory, you know, there's some people that disagree with each other in here. Great book. Uh, but don't get it because I'm the teacher and you're not allowed to. Just kidding. You can get it if you want. It's a, it's a great read. But there's one essay in particular by David L. Hall that inspired me to share some things specifically about these ideas of non-action, non-attachment, unlearning, not knowing, which I'll be including in the Exquisite Corpse, I think probably in the prologue or the epilogue afterwards, after the 81 poems, um, to give people a chance to read through the poems. And at the end, you know, this is kind of what it means to me, and then you can read through again. So without further ado, Taoism may be best understood in terms of potentiality. The ever popular Wu Wei non action is a prime example of this, as well as Wu Zi non knowing and Wu Yu non desire, otherwise known as the Wu forms, as referred to by David L. Hall. Wu is Chinese for non, as in not present or non being. There's some more nuance here between the whole concept of being between East and Western philosophy. We won't get into that. The nuance here is understanding Wu not simply as a negation, but a more complex, undetermined potentiality. In this context, it is similar to superposition and quantum theory. It both is and is not simultaneously. It is undecided or undifferentiated. Wu Wei, non-action, is by far the most popular two-word summary of Taoism. At first glance, it seems to advocate for total passivity or doing nothing. In actuality, it inspired what we now refer to as flow state, acting through non-action or acting spontaneously and accurately without thinking. Understanding this, we can understand that Taoism does not advocate for actionlessness, knowledgelessness, or desirelessness. It is instead a practice of honoring and understanding the transient and interdependent potentiality of all things. Or, as Ron Kurtz and Greg Johansson eloquently put it, Taoism is a radical affirmation of the trustworthiness of creation. The Taoist seeks to maintain an innocent yet masterful meta-awareness that they are living out a single possibility of a multiplicity of possibilities through a flowing participation of acting, knowing, wanting, and thus being. All realities are happening at once, but we can only experience one. The best way of understanding the Taoist self is a function of its relationships with the world shaped by Wu Zi, Wu Wei, and Wu Yu. It's a quote from David L. Hall. As such, we may understand Tao, the way, as an unmanifested potentiality, and De, virtue or power, as the emergent differentiation in our own one decided reality. In fact, Tao may be better understood as an intersection as opposed to a path, and Taoist understood as a potentialist. Put simply, decide to divide, unlearn to return. Put another way, the archetype of Taoism is the unsmiling infant or the uncarved block because of their pure latent potentiality, their undifferentiated unity. It is the headwaters of a river, a single source before even the first of 10,000 diverted streams of decisions and ideas within a lifetime. And so the Taoist seeks to regain this undividedness until they become the master, one who sees the 10,000 things as they are, are not, and could be. With this understanding, we may come to interpret the title of the Tao Te Ching as the scroll of differentiated potentiality. So that was a lot. That was a lot of words with many syllables uh, and some high level concepts. So you may want to watch that again, maybe two or three more times. And I hope that helps to kind of paint a clearer picture for you of what Taoism is and, and what we're working with here. There's been a lot of talk back and forth, and I've been kind of trying to find the words for it. And it wasn't until I read this essay last night that it came through to me in terms of potentiality. It's not that the Taoist advocates for non-attachment or non-desire or not knowing anything. It's acknowledging how many possibilities there are simultaneously and kind of enjoying the game of only 
picking one and being in one and, and flowing down that stream and that river. This does bring up some other debates and discussions about, you know, what is the way and what is virtue and how is predestination and free will involved in all of this. Um, but I think, as I've mentioned before, you have Tao, you have the way, which is the water moving through the river, the headwaters all the way down to the eternal ocean and virtue, how it manifests the power of it is our free will, our choices within those infinite possibilities. Now, non-action is not, not acting, it's being in spontaneous action. It's both acting and not acting. Non-knowledge is not abstaining from knowledge or you know being an idiot. It is being like an idiot. It is both knowing and not knowing and being aware that as soon as you know something, you've limited that thing to that box and understanding these things as tools. And there's some other poems about this later on, the Tao Te Ching that will come to with the greatest carver does the least cutting, knowing that these are just tools to use and you stay with the uncarved block. The words that we use, the Tao Te Ching that we're reading, all these things are tools to communicate these ideas. There was another quote in there, <clears throat> the opening of the essay, Confucius or someone you know, asked Lao Tzu about the first line. If the lay that cannot be spoken about, why are you speaking about it? And Lao Tzu answered, you know, I can provide you with a golden tapestry of dragons, but I cannot provide you with the golden needle that sewed it. So let me know what you think.